in this video we are going to discuss about semaphores in operating system semaphore is an integer variable that is shared by multiple processes let we have five processes such as p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 in the system then all the five processes can make use of this semaphore variable so semaphore means it is an integer variable that is shared by multiple processes in the system we can initialize the semaphore variable so we we know what is initialization we can assign some value to semaphore variable and we can access semaphore variable by two standard operations such as wait and signal so in order to access the semaphore variable we mainly performs two standard operations they are wait and signal here wait and signal operations are called as atomic operations atomic operation means let us assume that uh, 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 wait function contains let us assume that wait function contains 10 instructions so when a process is executing wait operation then we must execute all the 10 instructions in the middle it is not possible to forcibly stop this function it is not possible to interrupt this function so all the instructions in that function should be executed must and should so that is called as atomic atomic okay now let us see about wait and signal operation so wait of yes yes means semaphore variable uh, let's see the code for wait so wait of yes while s yes is less than or equal to 0 semicolon that means we know that we can initialize the semaphore uh, variable so initially we have to check the value of the semaphore variable if s yes is while s yes is less than 0 or while s is is equal to 0 then there is no need to perform any operation that process will be in waiting state that process will be in blocked state sleeping state suppose while s is greater than 0 while s is greater than 0 then we can decrement the value of the semaphore by 1 so this is the logic for wait operation so here we have two conditions are there first condition is if s is less than 0 or s is equals to 0 then do nothing there is no need to perform any operation that process will be in sleeping state or some blocked state otherwise suppose if s is greater than 0 that means if semaphore variable contains a positive number it may be 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 any positive number then we have to decrement the value of the semaphore by 1 okay now let us see about the second operation that is signal operation here already i said that these two operations are atomic operations if you take a wait wait here we have two statements are there so it is not possible to stop this function when the process is executing the first statement we must and should execute the two instructions in the wait function okay that's why this is called as atomic operation now let us see about signal operation signal of s yes. that means we are performing signal operation on the semaphore variable here simply we have to increment the value of the semaphore by 1 so in signal operation there is no need to check any condition simply here we have only one statement is there that is s plus plus that means increment the value of the semaphore by 1 here semaphores are mainly useful in order to implement mutual exclusion let us see how we can implement mutual exclusion uh, here this is the code here do while of one semicolon so one specifies that this condition is always true so one means true zero means false so while of one semicolon so one means this condition is always true so what is the first statement here in order to implement the mutual exclusion we are taking a variable called mutex where mutex stands for mutual exclusion 
here mutex is nothing but semaphore variable value here the initial value of the mutex is 1 so we know that we can initialize the semaphore variable value let the initial value of the mutex is 1 so first we have to execute weight of mutex so what is mutex value 1 so first we have to execute weight operation let us assume that two processes such as p1 and p2 wants to enter into the critical section so here we have critical section is there so weight of mutex semicolon if this condition is true then the process can enters into the critical section if this condition is true then this process can enters into the critical section okay so what is a critical section so critical section is a part of the program where the shared memory is accessed here we have two processes are there p1 and p2 in critical section uh, the two processes such as p1 and p2 can access the shared memory such as mutex here in this critical section only the shared memory is accessed the shared variable will be accessed here the constraint is when one process is in the critical section then no other process is allowed to enter into the critical section when p1 process is in the critical section then other processes such as p2 and p3 are not allowed to enter into the critical section why because when multiple processes access the shared variable simultaneously then it leads to wrong results so that's why only one process should be in the critical section now let us execute weight operation weight of mutex so what is the value of the mutex one so now let us assume that p1 process executed weight operation first here two processes are willing to enter into the critical section assumes that p1 process has executed weight operation first so now the control goes to the weight operation so what is the value of the initial value of the yes what is the initial value of the mutex one so that one will be passed to yes so now what is s value what is s value one now s value is one while s is less than or equal to zero so one is less than or equal to zero one is less than or equal to zero condition is false that means semaphore is a positive value if it is a positive value then what we have to do we have to decrement s by one what is the initial value of the s one so one minus one means zero now s value is zero s value is zero so p1 process can enters into the critical section now now assumes that p1 process is in the critical section when p1 process is in the critical section then no other processes are allowed to enter into the critical section so let us assume that p1 is in the critical section and in the meantime assumes that p2 is trying to enter into the critical section so for that p2 executes weight operation one more time now what is the value of the mutex what is the value of the mutex previously its value is one only but after that it is changed to zero after that it is changed to zero now what is mutex value zero zero so now control goes to the weight function now s value is what is s value what is s value zero s value is zero now while of s less than or equal to zero zero is less than or equal to zero zero is less than or equal to zero condition is true so p2 process cannot enters into the critical section if the condition is true then that process has to be weight okay so p2 process is not allowed to enter into the critical section so when p2 process can enters into the critical section let us see that code now okay so here p1 process is in the critical section let us assume that p1 process has completed all its operations so after that p1 process comes out from the critical section after coming out from the critical section p1 process execute signal operation p1 process execute signal operation signal of mutex so now the control goes to the signal operation signal operation so what is the value of the s yes? what is the value of the s yes? zero what is signal operation s yes plus plus now zero value will be incremented now now s yes will become one okay so after executing the signal operation now p1 process will be in the remainder section now assumes that p2 process wants to enter into the critical section so now what the p2 process will do p2 process execute weight operation 
P2 process execute weight operation. So weight of mutex. So control goes to the weight operation. Weight of S. So now what is S value? What is S value? S value is 1. S value is 1. So 1 is less than or equal to 0. 1 is less than or equal to 0. Condition is true. So S minus minus. So previously S value is 1. Now S value will become 0. So P2 process can enter into the critical section now. P2 process can enter into the critical section now. So like this we can implement the mutual exclusion with the help of the semaphore. So when one process is in the critical section then no other processes are allowed to enter into the critical section. This is called as mutual exclusion. So when P2 can enter into the critical section only after P1 came out from the critical section then only then only P2 can enter into the critical section. Uh, now let us see about types of semaphores. Mainly there are two types of semaphores are there. The first one is binary semaphore, binary semaphore and the second one is counting semaphore and the second one is counting semaphore. Binary semaphore means the value of the semaphore is binary. So binary means 0 or 1. So binary semaphore means the value may be either 0 or 1. Whereas counting semaphore means the value of that semaphore is any value. So it may be 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. Counting semaphores are mainly useful in order to count the available resources in the computer. Uh, we know we have different types of resources are there such as we have printer is a resource, uh, keyboard is a resource, mouse is a resource, scanner is a resource. Likewise we have various resources are there. So in order to count how the available resources we can use the counting semaphores. Whereas with the help of binary semaphores we can implement mutual exclusion problem. So this is about semaphores in operating system.